hallucinations and biases are large language models or LLM's biggest weaknesses. It's a big problem posing challenges specifically when commercializing applications built on these models. In this video, I will share up-to-date strategies to mitigate hallucinations and biases in LLMs effectively. Before diving into the tips, let's take a second to ensure we are all on the same page. Feel free to skip directly to the tips using the timestamps below if you are already familiar with the terms. When I say hallucinations, I'm referring to all those times when you asked a question to ChatGPT and got a completely different answer from what you expected. Something that didn't make any sense, which was indeed the case. LLMs are trained to generate the most likely text continuation rather than responding I don't know. This leads to many problems where the model fabricates an answer as it wants the positive reward that comes with giving valuable insights. It also believes it to be true, so it appears credible but isn't, potentially spreading misinformation at a very dangerous scale. To be trustable, LLMs need to answer only when they can, pretty much like humans, unless you want to fake your way to success. For example, here is ChatGPT attempting to summarize a non-existent New York Times article based on just this fake URL. Similarly, biases are a huge problem where your LLM will basically tend to answer in a specific way depending on what it was trained on. An example of bias is gender bias, where a model will likely predict teacher and nurse as a job for a woman, while it will predict engineer and mechanic for men. So the question we address today is, how can we manage the inherent biases and hallucinative tendencies of these models? Now that we are all on the same page, let's get into the interesting stuff. Also, I'll link practical tutorials to apply all those tips in the description below, coming from our free course we built in collaboration with Towards AI, Active Loop, and the Intel Disruptor Initiative for training, using, and deploying LLMs. Let's start with the basis. Obviously, you first want to have good data to train or fine-tune your LLM. So cleaning your data is not optional. It's a prerequisite. Regarding your data, try to get it from as many trustworthy sources as you can, and use as many human beings as possible to curate or generate it. The more humans you have in your data preparation loop, the more diverse and representative of our society your data will be. Tweak the inference parameters. These can include temperature, frequency penalty, presence penalty, and top P. Higher temperature values promote randomness and creativity, while lower values make the output more deterministic. Increasing the frequency penalty value encourages the model to use repeated tokens more conservatively. Similarly, a higher presence penalty value increases the likelihood of generating tokens not yet included in the generated text. The top P parameter plays a role in controlling response diversity by setting a cumulative probability threshold for word selection. So experiment with all those options available with most LLMs and find your best fit. This is a cost-effective and efficient method to improve the outputs of your LLM. Try prompt engineering. Test and find a good system prompt telling your model what to do and see. And do not hesitate to refrain from answering a question if the model is unsure. Prompt engineering is the cheapest and simplest way to mitigate hallucinations and biases. Some more specific prompting techniques could be to give examples of questions and answers you wanted to follow as some kind of template for its next response. We share many more prompting tips in another video of this LLM series if you are interested in better controlling your LLM's outputs. It still hallucinates even after the best possible data and lots of time invested into prompt engineering. What can you do? Well, a good way is to tackle the problem at its source. If you have access to accurate information about your topic, you can use a method called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or an efficient alternative called Deep Memory by Active Loop. This method gives additional knowledge to the LLM and asks it to answer only if the question is related to the knowledge you give it. This is a very powerful solution when you have specific documentation at hand and want your chatbot to be able to answer questions based on this information. The system will compare the question with your documentation and respond only if the question aligns with the provided information. But how is this information all used through this deep memory system? Through embeddings. Embeddings are basically the machine's languages. For example, let's take the word cat. This is in English, but you could say un chat in French or gâteau in Spanish. It's just different ways of memorizing and understanding the concept of a cat. Similarly, AIs are trained to understand all the concepts, words, and sentences. 
and we call those their embeddings. We basically send our English sentences or images and they get transformed into an embeddings composed of numbers in a vector with some tools like ActiveLoop. Here, for example, we do it with images to better see how images are related to each other and to show that it also works with images, but it's the same for text. Then we can visualize this new AI language and compare them to see how similar a concept is to another and understand sentences and perform question answering. You can also query the dataset embeddings since it can all compare and understand any form of input, whether it is text or images, since it's all embedded into the same language. If we want to have all our documents in our system's memory, we simply need to embed all of them which can then be queried with questions by comparing the questions embedding to all our embedded documentation through the retrieval part of the algorithm. This is where the benefits of deep memory by ActiveLoop come in. The main idea behind deep memory is that traditional retrieval augmented generation search is not efficient and for most of the real world use cases yields relatively low recall, which makes it not production ready. They decided to resolve the problem by first training a model that will align your embeddings with queries, using this trained model to retrieve embeddings results in a higher recall, thus making your RAG system more production ready. With a RAG system, you can also provide sources and links to where your documentation is hosted. So even if the model didn't answer correctly, the user can easily double check by clicking on the link. This also helps mitigate biases as the model's answers are no longer solely based on the training data, but on an external curated source of knowledge it queries from. Similarly, you may want to simply fine tune it on high quality unbiased data, which we have another video on the topic, to actually give the model more knowledge on the specific topic you want it to be an expert in. This step is a bit more costly since you need the compute to train the model once more. But there are lots of optimization techniques we shared in the course to allow you to do that on a single GPU or even an Intel CPU. Use a new system called Constitutional AI. Constitutional AI or CAI is a new framework to better align your system with your values to make it more trustworthy and safe. Here, you simply need to define a set of principles you want your AI to follow and a small set of process examples. Then, you use another model that will use those principles to teach your LLM to follow them using reinforcement learning. This new approach is called RLAIF or reinforcement learning with AI feedback instead of humans, as was the case for GPT-4, and has been proven to work incredibly well. I also covered it more in depth in our RLHF video of this series, if you are curious. The last tip, stay up to date with new research publications. This is still an unsolved problem that lots of companies and research labs are working on. I'll also be covering all new approaches on my channel, so you can either look out for news elsewhere or simply subscribe to the channel and be notified when something worthwhile comes out. In conclusion, LLMs with their biases and hallucinations can sometimes mislead us, but we can harness their power responsibly and effectively with the right strategies like input controls, model tweaks, and improvements we discussed. If you want to apply that to your own model or application, dive deeper with our free course on training, improving, and fine-tuning LLMs, a collaboration with Towards AI, Active Loop, and the Intel Disruptor Initiative. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time with more recent and powerful AI solutions.